What's up, everyone? Shell Magic, Monster Lobby, Dungeon Crystals, and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus! Woo! Finally, I am playing this! Yay! Now, I know I was meant to play Doki Doki Blue Skies, but I decided to do this one instead. Because, well, with Blue Skies, no, well, number one, it's going to take a very, very long time to record the entire thing. And plus, the story is just basically Monica is just not doing any um, hacking stuff and things like that. Well, at least I think so far. Um, but yeah, but there could be a chance maybe I might play it next year, or I don't know, maybe like another time. But for now, I'm doing Doki Doki Literature Club just before this year ends. But now, one thing though, I actually did go through the game, but so far, I was I was actually expecting um I was expecting like maybe like a new animation or like a new drawing style or something like new about the story. But no, it's just the exact same thing, except. Look at this! So it brings you down to like a different website. So if you guys have probably seen, I have like recently, I had like done like two episodes, well I have done two episodes, but I'm most likely going to delete them because they're just the exact same thing, and plus I'm planning to play Doki Doki again next week, next year. But what I can do, however, is that there are side stories, that's what's new to the game. So basically, it's to show different reasons of why maybe some people joined the literature club and things like that. So apparently, there are about six different side stories. So far, I got two of them. And there are like four different ones. And I think they said it was depending on what kind of poem I made. Not only that, but like, look. <laughs> so here's the files again. So I guess this is like um to make it less complicated. And here we have like mail, which I don't know what the mail is for. And then we have pictures, which for the pictures, yeah, it has like all the poems and things like that. And it also even has the music album stuff. And even some nice one like this one. How much do I press plus? Does it actually do wait, if I press plus, does it download it? Nope, it does not. Playlists? Oh, it just always has playlists. That's very cool. But anyway, let's just get right into, like, the side stories. So, yeah. There we go, side stories. So, the side stories of friendship and are unrelated to the events of the main game. To get all six stories, try to write a pose for different characters and viewing their special scene in DDLC. So yeah, so basically this is just looking at these things, so let's go. And here we come with my voice again. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh, that's quite lovely. What the? I've never seen that before. Okay, everyone, the Literature Club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance today. Ugh, I missed the bit club. Who knew it would be so difficult to start a new club? I feel it worse with, with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica's the only member of the Literature Club. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, do you like literature? Maybe nobody is into literature enough to pick it over their other club interests. I can't just rely on people liking literature. I had to sell them on a vision. A vision? But what kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. But before she realizes it, the recent night of staying up too late starts to catch up to her. It's so quiet and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. Uh. Um, hello? Sayori! Suddenly a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Ooh, this is quite a cheerful song. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I never do this. Hey, is this snapping club? No, this is... Monica pauses, suddenly embarrassed to admit this is, in fact, the literature club. This is the literature club. I thought I was in the wrong place for a sec! Um, I'm super sorry. It was like, 
so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize, I do it all the time! Oh. Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that, this is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members and working really hard on it. Hold on a sec! If it's just you, that means I get to be the vice president! Wait, vice president? Um, what are your clarifications? Well, I better act nothing than you! Maybe I should be the president! Now, now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry! Um, what was your name? Sayori! Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening to not ta be taken seriously, you know? I do- I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no! I'm so sorry! I do care, I promise! I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean to, for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president thing too. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that Marika tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry, that isn't like like a real club yet. Would you would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members at least? Well, no! I wanna join now! Really? Yeah! It sounds like lots of fun! Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working! You're doing something amazing and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you return something stressful into something fun! If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... Ha 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 Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, and Monica, by the way. Monica! That's such a cool name! Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling! Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances on the flyer on her deck and realizes that her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We could go home and try and try come up with some new ideas to recruit club members. I can do that! Cool. And I think I need to put on some of my thought into my vision for the club. You know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy! <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sierra suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug, then let's go. Some people say it can really can really use a hug sometimes. Besides! Sorry whispers out loudly. Hug energy is what keeps me at my best! Haha, <laughs> hug energy? Monica laughs. Although Sierra is very different from her, Monica feels the skirt lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited! I'm gonna think really hard tonight and about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. A day passes and the time comes to the literature club, Monica and Sayori to reconvince. As president, Monica shows that she's the first to arrive at the club room, but she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining. No, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry, I'm late! I'm here! It's okay. Welcome back. Sierra spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet of paper onto the desk. Oh, what's this? <clears throat> I take my hand. Take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look to you, up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can lend to you, the more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Straight away with the poems. Hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Sayori? Of course! Wait, wait, no! That's the wrong side of the paper! Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet! I'm so embarrassed! Marco flips over the paper. Right on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now, do you write po poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good as as, as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I, I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a few weeks after I write it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. 
I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something like that. Aww! You should have more confidence in yourself! You're the literature president! Uh, I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. Hmm, you know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems with... Like sharing poems we write and stuff like that. Oh yeah! I would love that! It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people usually. But you, but you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah, I think that's helping me from form a more co co uh, cohesive vision for the club. So I'm glad you showed me well, even though it was by accident. Me too! I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else re read it. I'll try to show you some more of them in the future! I'd love, I'd love that. Oh jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over to the, this recruitment brainstorm together? My brainstorm so hard! It was like brain, a brain hurricane! My brain is a natural disaster! <laughs> Stay already, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes? I was hungry! But it's a good idea! Isn't it? Um, let me think about this. I mean, when would we ever have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club? What if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm, like, kind of worried that that would bring the wrong kids up kind of people, you know? Wrong kinds? People who would just come for the cupcakes and leave. Aw, nobody would do that! That would be mean! But, you know, I want to find people who are really into literature, even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list, hunt for people reading books. I don't think I get it. Like going around the school and finding people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch! And we tell them to check out the literature club! Well, the problem with that is like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How would we know if they're just reading for fun? Um, well, we could ask them. Then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot of things that, that I can't. Oh, your next idea sounds like a ha- Oh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them on the wall. I'd definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful! Haha, <laughs> I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What would we tell people when we hand them out? I don't want to just be like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if you told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? A vision for the club. Okay, Siori, pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who, who was getting a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Hmm. Probably like... Literature club... Literature stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? Ah, sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Oh, okay. What if I said that we, like do group reading and discussion together. I would probably nap through that. That's you, that's you, Sayori. Yeah, that doesn't really sound fun to do for most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Uh, this sucks. Why is this so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you a chance to express yourself. I express yourself in ways that you can't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like... intimate. Yeah, how, how do we get that across to people? We could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with us! Okay, that's kind of... Eh, just kidding. Oh my gosh! What? What is it? I've got all my things in my classroom! I must have gotten too excited and rushed here! Silly me! Rush? But weren't? Uh, never mind. Did you did you want to get your stuff then? I will forget if I don't know if I don't do it now! <laughs> well, I'll wait up for you then. Okay! It'll take a second! Sierra dashes out of the room, leaving Monica moment momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. 
Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Wow, that's lame. Monica! Ah, you startled me. Sorry, but it's something important. On the way back to my class, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um, well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from her desk. Then the two depart from the classroom with Sayori leading the way. This way! You don't have to run. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom then lowers her voice to a whisper. See? In here! Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her! Me? You're the president and I would probably scare her away! Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath and then timidly enters the classroom. Brother Yuri. That was fast! Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why? What happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom and she didn't even look up from her book. So I just kind of left the flyer on her desk and walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? The two head back to the club room, Sierra feel feeling rather accomplished, and Monica still feeling a little embarrassed about the encounter. Upcoming return, Monica and Sierra resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics, from the professional to silly. After going through Sierra's list and with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end in a better spot than from where they began. Well, I would say today was a pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah! I think we're starting to make progress! I can't wait to get some new members! Hey, what's this? Sierra peers into a sheet of paper that Monica was jolting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club right the way into your hearts? That's so cute! <laughs> I thought it was a little overdramatic. But! Sierra pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What? What do you mean? Like, I don't know, I feel like that I can tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but... Would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah? Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try the, my hardest at everything, so I don't think it's that bad. Like, with this club, we have such an opportunity to make into the exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm really just afraid of de deviating from that, the vision. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think, then she shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sari taps her finger against the sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the look is to make the club that you need the most out of any anyone. Well <clears throat> Well Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course. But I'm here to help you! Monica returns Sierra's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really gonna make this the best club ever. Sierra nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air condi conditioner, and the only movement is the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sari breaks the moment with a big yawn. It's time, it's time to go home? You tell me! You're the president! <laughs> in that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too! Sari beams and grabs her things. You can go ahead. I need a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait! That's alright, I just want to, some time alone. Hmm, in that case... Sari waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck! Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori spins her way out of the club room. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decided it was something she probably needed right about now. The club that I need the most... I don't get it. I just want to start a club with more passion. 
something that I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that, because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be perfect. Hmm? Marcus only noticed a folder on the floor of by her desk. Did Siori leave this behind? I hope it doesn't have her homework in it. Worried Monica has opened the folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Ooh, more. <clears throat> Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me, all for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck every day. Pluck, 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 so pretty in my hair. Pluck, 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 you're going to die, and you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from the clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what end? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the, pros the preposterous field, is a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy. That is why I've decided I must become the flower. What the? Wait, Siori? Hmm. Oh, that was it. I got new pictures, yay! Oh, it's the other poems. Hmm. Oh, so there are gaps at some point, so that might be um, when... Ooh, okay. Interesting. Alright, let's go to the next one. Oh, I knocked new music. Wh which one is it? Oh, whatever. Alright, part two, let's go. Another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club task, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Siori is going through these kinds of feelings, and I'm letting her com uh, comfort me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president does that? This whole thing, this whole time, I didn't think to ask about her feelings. So much for this stupid vision. Siori enters the club room with her un a usual smile, but upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend! Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even if even you said yes so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Story responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Siori mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sierra nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration as of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things. But as unfair as it is to Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay. I understand that you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put that aside and that we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. 
right the way into your heart or whatever. So I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise! Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. Me too! As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, wanna teach me about poetry? Huh? But, what about the recruitment? It's fine, we have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know? <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that! Just don't expect much! I, I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think you just need, like, some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You just kind of need to write down your feelings and just see where it takes you. Yeah, but wouldn't, but wouldn't it come out any... But that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're going to have to fight your perfection mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kind of things it makes you think of. And then, you can turn your feeling into a little story! Hmm. You can get your feelings down first, and then make it sound pretty later! It's like, it's not like building a railroad, where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a college, where you find all the things you want to put in, and then arrange them in the pretty way! At least, that's how I do it! It's not like it's the only way! But it's a really good way not to get stuck right at the beginning! I understand. Yeah. I always get so caught up in how it sounds that I forgot what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper and start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. Ha <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out you idiot after she writes it down. No, keep it! What? Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not! But the point is that you're not supposed to you're not supposed to police your feeling, right? Be as dramatic as you want! Haha, <laughs> but I was just well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica writes, you idiot. She stares at the paper. Her wits stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote that down and I'm... What I'm mad at myself for. And then I did the exact same thing anyway. This is really gonna take some getting used to. I believe in you! Thanks. I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues to exercise jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it, but it also feels kind of liberating. Mm-hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be as good... I think you'll be good at writing poems. Haha, <laughs> don't give me too much credit. I have to really, really hot. I, I have to try really, really hard at it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you. Siri beams. I'll stop here. We still have time. Let's try to work on a few flyers for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Hey, let's do it! Mark and Siri proceeded with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As the bond strengthens, so does the ascent of the Literature Club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the, is the first one to the club room. With her, <coughs> with her as a printout of the revised Literature Club flyers, complete with all new ideas Monica and Sierra came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave out at the one at the one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. But the new catchphrase features clearly in the center of the flyer. Write what your write the way into your heart. Surely common senses would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Mark and Sierra had thought that it would be enough to gu to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense just looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be the president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? 
The literature club is truly beginning to take form, but with that, the weight of Monica's shoulder only becomes heavier. The Bay Club was always about rigid structure, form formulating all right points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her already her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I had to break through the mental wall. I had to learn to express myself for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. But her hand doesn't move. Instead of a tiny blot, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of the pen. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little ink blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her fingers across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh. Out of spite for herself, Monica presses the pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She, she creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Ooh, that's good. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi. Monica has Sierra's approach her desk and then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in the, adju in the adjacent sit desk. Bad day? Mm-hmm. Me too. You too? The new fly looks so good. You're, you've been working so hard on the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard. It's just be vulnerable. Hmm. Sarah takes a sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down and stares at the paper for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sierra gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding that signal, Monica takes the paper from Sierra's desk and reads it. Sometimes I want to die. Oh, That hit hard. Sayori, this is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Sarah takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I never told anyone before. Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't, you don't have to force yourself. I mean, that's because of the promise yesterday. I want to! It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Siri must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Will, Monica, will Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually push that Siri needed? Siri's deliberate break. <clears throat> Breath can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you could just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kinds of things that or thoughts I have. It's so much easier just to smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone would be worried about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sari pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Siri pauses again, the solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this, but another part of me 
I think, just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could stay in the confidence and our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Marika feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Marika steps forward. But, if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hog energy. If you'd like. Ah. Where does the end without a smile? Siri rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Through their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of her thoughts swimming in Siri's head. In this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that out of all of these days that have passed, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody knew walks. He walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Siri breathe, breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying so hard she can start. Trying as hard as she can to start speaking, to say to say the things she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless. Everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as the tears fall down her cheeks. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything. It just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. And I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice. Falling victim to the overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I don't want them to go away. I know I'm making you put up with me and I just want to die. As soon as Sierra loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now. So she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up this isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows Sayori said it herself. That she thought Sierra experiences are ones that don't belong. And Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she could do is help Sierra battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value. To me, and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision. You also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Siri doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are need between them. Oh, The two share their embrace for a while longer. Monica letting Siri take as much time as she needs. Once her breath steadies and her sniffles feel fully cease, Siri lifts her head and wipes her tea eyes. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than the others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are always the, always the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Siri nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course, it's always to be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I could do my best to help you. Thanks! I think it helps knowing that you would. Sierra suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me feel tired and hungry. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I can see that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Ah, uh, Yuri. Oh, and it ends there! That was so heartwarming. Let me see it again. Ah, oh, that was so heartwarming. Says wallpaper.
Aww. It really tugged on my heart then. Gosh, that makes it so much sadder. Because I remember the fact that, like, the reason, like, Monica just killed her friends was just because she got jealous that she was never going to be chosen as someone to be loved as part of the game. But now that adding these backstories, it makes it so much more impossible to see, like, why or how she would even do this. I don't mean how, as in, like, how she did it, but more like how she could have brought herself to just, like, do that. That was very nice, though. Ah, <laughs> oh, I might- oh, so I might as well end the video here just to make it shorter. So what I'll probably do is that next video, uh, we, we do have another side story, but now to get the others, I'm pretty sure we'll need a bit more. So I'm going to end the video here. So anyway guys, thank you guys for watching the video, if you like it, leave a like, subscribe, and about us, see you all in the future.